Welcome back. My name is Stefan Trovich, and this is part two of my cap table series. If you haven't already, I suggest you start with part one, which I'll probably link right up here. For the rest of us, we're going to continue with our original hypothetical startup example, and we're at some future date. Our startup has received the interest from two angel investors who in total want to invest $150,000. And this investment will be in the form of a convertible note or a convertible loan. Now this means that we're not giving up equity today. This loan is going to convert into equity at some point in the future. And how much equity we give away really depends on three things. One, what's the valuation set at the next round of funding? Two, what's the discount rate provided to the angels? And three, what is the cap set on the loan? Let's cover this all right now in Excel. July 1st, 2016, and we finally received our $150,000 of cash from the two angel investors. Now what you have in front of you, it's not really a cap table. That's on the other tabs. What we're showing is really a separate tracker to tell us what is the initial investment, how much interest was accrued, and the other factors that ultimately help us determine how much equity will be given to these two angel investors once their loan converts into equity at the next round of funding, which will be the Series A. And it might look a little complicated at first, but I promise it's easy, and the best way to talk about it is to go down line by line. Starting with marker number one, we show just the cash that was received from each of these investors, which is also the principal amount invested. As we said, it's 100K from angel number one and 50K from angel number two. Now moving on to the second marker, this is a loan, so there obviously is an annual interest rate, and here we see that each of the investors received 8%. Now, it's very typical because these investors did invest at the exact same time. They have the same risk profile for which they invested in the company, so they should get the same rate. Very rarely will you see differing rates for investors who invested at the exact same time. Here for marker number three is the discount rate given to the angel investors compared to the Series A share price. As we said, these angel investors are taking on a higher risk by giving us their cash today compared to the theoretical Series A investors in the future. So what we do is, based on the valuation set at the Series A, let's pretend it's $10 million, we're going to let the principal amount invested by the angel investors, plus the interest they accrued, that amount is going to convert into equity at a valuation that is 10% less than the Series A. So if it is a $10 million valuation at Series A, this is going to convert at $9 million. The next row just shows the date of the convertible funding, which we said is July 1, 2016, which is today's theoretical date. And obviously we have no idea when the Series A investment is going to happen, and it's never what you think it is, but we're going to pretend that it's on January 1, 2017 to help us with some of the calculations below. Here for the second table is our calculations for share conversion. Now again, we don't know when the Series A will occur, nor the valuation, but we can use our estimated date for the Series A funding of Jan 1, 2017 to help us start with some of these conversions below. So first of all, for marker number five, we have the days of accrued interest on the note. And that's simply the estimated date of conversion minus the date of the convertible note funding, which gets us to 184 days. And that's the same for both angel investors. Moving on to marker number six and the next row, which is interest accrued, this is the calculation of seeing how much cash interest was accrued for each of these investors. And that's as simple as taking the principal amount invested, which is $100,000 for angel investor number one, multiplying it by the days of interest accrued on the note, divided by 360, times the annual interest rate. And that simply gets us $4,089 for angel investor number one, and a much lower number of about $2,000 for angel investor number two because the principal they invested was half at $50,000. Moving down to marker number seven, this is the value of the convertible note. And it's as simple as principal plus interest. For angel number one, the principal cash invested was $100,000, and we're adding the $4,089 of interest accrued to get us a total of $104K and $89. And the same is done for angel number two. Moving on to the next row in marker number eight, this is the value of the convertible note into series A. Because remember, these angel investors are getting that discount and we're just seeing what's the cash amount at which they're going to use to determine the amount of shares they get. Here for angel number one, it's simply going to be the 104K and $89 divided by one minus the discount rate. So that initial 104K is actually now worth 115. So for example, when the Series A funding does happen, and let's just say the share price is $1, this angel investor number one would ultimately be issued 115,654 shares. 
That's how the math works, and it's exactly what we would do for angel number two. Moving on to the last piece, this is where we actually would calculate the Series A share price and the shares purchased by the convertible note. Again, the Series A investment hasn't happened yet. That's in part three. So we won't look at that just yet, and we're going to keep it at NA for now. Before we move on, it is important to discuss a valuation cap. Now, we didn't include this within the Excel example to keep things simple, but it is something you should know because most angels will include it within their contracts. And all a valuation cap does is set an upper limit for the valuation at the Series A at which the convertible investment will convert to equity. Now, I know that's a mouthful, but this is all it means. If the Series A investors invest at a $20 million valuation, but the valuation cap set by the angel is $10 million, the angel's investment will convert to equity at a $10 million valuation plus the discount on top, which here is 10% regardless of the high valuation of 20 million that the Series A investors get. Now, if the Series A investors invest at an $8 million valuation, then the cap doesn't matter. The angel's investment will convert at an $8 million valuation plus the discount on top of that. It's that simple and it's just there to protect all new angel investors from taking on too much risk and getting too high of a valuation at the next round of funding. That's it, folks. That's all I have for today. And we're really setting ourselves up for part three where not only are we going through the mechanics of getting a straight equity Series A investment, we're going to see how all the hard work we did today pays off when the convertible loans finally convert to equity. See you in part three.